Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be discussing the elements of time and price and how we can understand the algorithm to have high probability trading. So we are going to get right into this one and we're starting on the 15 minute chart on NASDAQ. We are going to look at the draw on liquidity. That is the number one most important thing in your trading for your narrative and then ultimately entering a trade. If there is no draw on liquidity, then you do not do anything until a draw on liquidity is clear. I have been making this clear in the past few videos on this YouTube channel. And I cannot stress the simple fact and the importance of that matter. No draw on liquidity, no trade. So as you can see here, this is backed up to right before 930 open to see what my discord and I were looking at in terms of our bias. So of course, as you can see, we have clear as day equal highs here, another 15 minute swing high falling short here, another 15 minute swing high falling short here. So we have relative equal highs that can reasonably suggest to us that a bullish idea is in play for today's New York session. On top of these relative equal highs, where are they residing? If you look to the right side of this chart here, they're right above midnight opening price. So you're stacking confluence between midnight open and relative equal highs. And when you see these types of signatures, this leads to a high probability buy side liquidity pool. Or in other words, we can expect price to draw up to here. We just have to spot the manipulation and then the reversal signatures. So on top of this external buy side liquidity, just for a level, you can see 20,657 even. That's what we were looking at for today's objective while the market was playing out this morning. But on top of that, we have internal buy side liquidity here where we see a swing high and then right before 930 open, they engineer buy side liquidity. This swing high falls just short of the internal buy side. So while the manipulation is taking place before we enter our trade, we want to see as much engineered buy side left behind for us to target while that manipulation is occurring for the simple reason that we just want to continue to stack confluence, continue to see as much buy side liquidity pools left for us to target, right? Reasons for the algorithm to push price higher, okay? Now, an essential part of today's bias preparing for 930's open was what you see here, sell side delivery, buy side delivery. So that makes this structure, this white rectangle that you see on the chart now, a BPR or a balanced price range. So while we are watching this and preparing for 930 open, we're saying, okay, we prefer longs and want to see price go higher as long as this balanced price range supports price. And this is going to be important as we maneuver to the lower time frames and throughout tonight's lesson. Okay. On top of this, you can see that we're running lower, sweeping sell side liquidity. And then when you see aggressive sell side delivery followed by aggressive buy side recovery, this V shaped formation, if you will, is a signature for trapped shorts. So if shorts are indeed trapped down here, why would the algorithm bring price all the way back down to this swing low to give them the opportunity to get out at break even? it's going to leave that swing low undelivered to to keep those shorts underwater as it progresses to those buy side liquidity pools as we see here. So if we continue forward, we are progressing to the one minute time frame. We're still on NASDAQ and we're going to walk through what we were watching this morning, how I built a narrative and was able to capture this recovery back to the buy side liquidity pools. So first and foremost, this is the internal buy side liquidity pool, 20,590.5. That is where we want to see price go. And after 930 open, we're applying the opening range filter. Now, what is the opening range filter? It's simple. When there's no 10 a.m. red folder news, the opening range filter spans from 930 a.m. Eastern time to 950 Eastern time. So that's where this chart is backed up into. This up close candle is 949 right before the 950 macro, which of course we will get into. Okay. And this is showing you the importance of time, right? If we have this fair value gap or SIBI here and this SIBI here, focus more so on this one and even look at the 50 minute BPR that I've copied and pasted down to this one minute time frame, the white box here. If you're only looking at price and you don't understand the value of time, you're going to say, okay, we ran lows here. We came back up, closed above the SIBI. This is a bullish inversion. I should go long now. But what element are you missing for a high probability trade setup? time. And on top of this, if you let the opening range play out, and again, the opening range is from 930 to 10 a.m. Eastern time. But when we don't have 10 a.m. red folder news, I only apply this filter from 930 to 950, then allow myself per se to enter trades if I see a setup at 950. Okay. But letting the opening range play out 
gives you information that is essential for high probability setups and just your narrative as you progress throughout that 10 to 11 a.m. window and the a.m. session in its entirety, right? So if we're not concerned about putting risk on the table, entering trades until the 950 macro, I'm not doing things like entering long on this inversion or entering short on this order block or entering short out of this SIBI, especially if we're operating on the one minute time frame. You need to understand and apply the element of time for a high probability trade, okay? Now, when we have higher time frame areas of interest, higher time frame PD arrays, key levels, um, 50 minute BPR is what we are referring to in this case. And then you can see significant inefficiencies on the lower time frame overlapping within those higher time frame key levels. You can get a really great idea of what should occur in terms of just reading order flow. So, what do I mean by this? If we're trying to understand if this delivery below 930's opening price, which of course you can see is right here. If we're trying to determine if this is a real move down and if we're going to flush down to this sell side liquidity pool that you see here, or if it's a Judas swing, a fake move below 930's opening price just to send us higher. All I'm doing is looking back at the left side of the curve and trying to identify what the algorithm used to send us higher on the buy side of the curve right? So as you can see here, this orange box that I have highlighted and anchored here, price was dropping into this and was propelled higher out of that inefficiency. Okay. So once we close below it, that classifies it as a high probability bearish inversion. Or in other words, if we close below, then come back up into it. If we are truly bearish, we should make that next leg lower. Okay, now why else is this significant? You can see we have this SIBI passing through this BISI as well. So these are two reasons to expect lower prices if we are truly bearish and for price to reject out of this level. And now on top of this, look at where this SIBI and high probability bearish inversion are residing right at the bottom of that 15 minute BPR. So if we are truly bearish, we should just bleed out of this, right? And this morning, I was only interested in long. So understanding that if we are bearish, we should go out of this helps me identify a reversal point. And that will make sense as I progress throughout the next couple of slides. But when we were on live stream this morning, we're saying, okay, if we are bearish, we should come up into this, go lower into the new week opening gap plain and simple. And I'm doing the same thing looking at the left side of this curve for lower objectives. And I can see that this BISI here was also utilized to send price higher. So if we are going to go down and get this sell side liquidity pool here, we should close below it, come back up into it and bleed to that sell side liquidity pool. So price does in fact come up into this SIBI, this inversion, the bottom of that 15 minute balance price range and reach down to the new week opening gap high and this BISI of interest. So what we're trying to see, as I already mentioned, is if price is going to close below this and then make that next leg lower, okay? I do not wanna be a seller in this scenario because of the narrative that we have built from the 15 minute time frame at the start of this video. We have clear as day buy side liquidity pools to target, okay? so. Understanding that if we are truly bearish, we should not go above this helps me identify and enter on a long setup. Now, applying macro power of three concepts, which we discuss time and time again on this channel, which we see occur daily in the marketplace beautifully, that is what we are looking for our actual entry criteria here. So again, we're on the one minute chart and I want to see what? I want to see price close above this SIBI because it was initially used to push us lower. So that was its initial state of delivery. Once we close above it, it becomes a high probability bullish inversion. Okay. On top of this, we have an SMT into the new week opening gap and into this BISI, right? And where is that occurring? Below macro opening price. And that's what you should expect for a long setup for the best case macro power of three trades. As we progress, what do we see? We do get that close above this SIBI, classifying it as a high probability bullish inversion. And now the scene is set for buy side delivery. We have a drawn liquidity. We saw manipulation. Where did that manipulation occur below? 930's opening price, macro's opening price. Sunday's opening price is just a new week opening gap high, which we did wick into and find support of. And now we're seeing signatures of a turning point. And again, cherry on top is the SMT during a macro. So NASDAQ was making the lower low here while ES was failing to. That is your crack in correlation. And at its core, you are seeing time align with price here. You're seeing signatures and price from the algorithm present to you a reversal 
during a macro, right? But at its core, no draw on liquidity, no trade. We established a draw on liquidity. Did we see manipulation below key opening prices? Yes. Are we seeing a reversal signature? Yes. So after we see this candle close because the bodies tell the story, we see a smoke screen and a breakaway gap. And this is where you can start to frame your entry, your trade, your stop loss, your target. So if we're targeting this internal buy side liquidity pool again at 20,590.5, this is our entry, the high probability bullish inversion. Our hard stop loss can be this swing low below the inversion, but really we want to see this BISI be classified as a breakaway gap. I've discussed this time and time again as well on this channel, right? If we have a high probability inversion and a discount inefficiency or a fair value gap below that inversion, we want to see that remain as a breakaway gap. And what do we see here? Price closes above the SIBI, high probability inversion, fails to get down to the breakaway gap and expands to our internal buy side liquidity pool. So especially as we're on the one minute time frame, it's important to know which inefficiencies to monitor. So you're looking at things that were in fact used by the algorithm and that are also aligning with these higher time frame key inefficiencies. Okay, so if we rewind back to the 15 minute time frame, we can see what occurred beautifully. We have the BPR. Was there a little coloring outside of the lines? Yes. And that was what we just discussed on the one minute time frame. But you can see we wicked into Sunday's opening price. And on the 15 minute time frame here, the bodies tell the story. Did the candle close within and respect this balanced price range? Yes. And then we see that expansion to both the internal buy side liquidity pool and the external buy side liquidity pool. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It is essential to wait for macro times, right? It does not mean that every macro is going to provide a beautiful setup, and that should not be your expectation whatsoever. But you're waiting for the best of the best setups, and you're waiting for time and price to align, and then you're trusting your analysis and letting your trade run. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments, and I will talk with everybody soon.